Well, this year, Canadians escaped the worst of the pandemic, but entered a cost-of-living crisis, and that's what, that's what drove debate on the political stage. As we bring 2022 to a close, let's take a look at where political leaders stand. The latest Angus Reid Institute poll shows 43% of Canadians approve of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, while 54% disapprove. New Conservative leader Pierre Polyev has a favourable rating among 33% of Canadians. NDP leader Jagmeet Singh, 47%, and Bloc Québécois leader Yves-François Blanchette, 47% as well. And if an election were held today, a new Léger poll shows that 33% of Canadians would vote for the Conservative Party of Canada, 30% would vote for the Liberal Party, and 21% would vote for the NDP. So what does this mean for next year's political priorities? I'm joined now by a special panel of pollsters, Shachi Curl from the Angus Reid Institute and Christian Bork from Leger. Hello, welcome to you both. Uh, Shachi, I will start with you and let's start with the man in power. Uh, what do these numbers tell you about how Prime Minister Justin Trudeau performed this year? Well, I think it put a little bit more mojo or spring into his year-end interviews, Brett and hi, Christian. Uh, basically, we're seeing uh, the Prime Minister end the year in a much stronger position than he started. Much of that driven by, I think, perceptions of uh, having performed well and comported himself well uh, around the Emergency Act hearings. Politically, the emergencies, uh, the invocation of the Emergency Act uh, at the at the uh, end of, of the convoy troubles, and particularly the occupation of Ottawa, uh, was something that, that did have a level of consensus or buy-in politically. Uh, when we saw the Prime Minister testifying quite calmly, uh, in an in a in-depth and a knowledgeable way, it was also something Thing that I think gave Canadians uh, reason to pause and remember uh, why they like the guy, because it's it's something that ebbs and flows. I've always said over the many years of, of his leadership that the Prime Minister for the Liberal Party is, is both its greatest asset and its worst liability. Mm. We see him ending uh, 2022 uh, working on some of that, that asset factor. Now again, Shachi, your numbers show that uh, NDP leader Jagmeet Singh and Bloc Québécois leader Yves-François Blanchette have some particularly high favorability ratings. Uh, will they be dining out on those numbers? What do you read into them? Well, for Mr. Blanchette in Quebec, it's definitely, uh, def you know, again, reassuring for him. Uh, he's he's more or less had a grip on the Bloc Québécois. There haven't been a lot of challenges. There hasn't been a lot of unrest within the ranks of caucus. So that's something, again, that he can end the year with, with a place of, of peace around. Same for Jagmeet Singh. He'll take that 47% favorability uh, that Canadians are giving him. The challenge, however, for the NDP leader really comes down to the fact that it has not, as a national party that runs uh, candidates in, in uh, across the country and in most parts of the country in most ridings, uh, if not all, depending on the election itself, uh, you get to a point where um, he is not necessarily seeing that popularity uh, translate into wins at, at, at the riding level, into more seats in Parliament. So for Mr. Singh, it's always tinged with a bit of an asterisk mm -hmm. because that personal popularity is there. However, he is the supporting actor or the supporting player in the confidence and supply agreement between two parties, the NDP and the Liberals. And it's, uh, it's really unclear as to whether his personal popularity or the moves he made around CASA are going to actually reward him come a future election. Okay, Christian, over to you. Uh, Mr. Polyev won the Conservative leadership race rather handily. What do the numbers tell you about how he has fared politically since then? Yeah, this is the fifth month where we have a slight lead for the Conservatives over the Liberals. But at 33 for the Conservatives and 30 for the Liberals, uh, it's still not a major shift uh, in the political landscape in Canada. Uh, and if you look at those numbers, though, the Conservatives have improved somewhat uh, their fortunes in Ontario, which is, a, of course, a key battleground coming into the next federal election. 
However, when you look at the Mississauga Lakeshore by-election results, it's the first sort of part of the answer that says that maybe it's not enough just yet. I think Sanchi is quite right, is that the uh, Mr. Trudeau is holding strong to uh, uh, in terms of popularity. Uh, he has not hurt his party over the past few months, uh, quite the contrary. So the Liberals are resisting, even in, a, in an economic climate where you would think, you know, uh, the famous phrase, it's the economy, stupid. Uh, we all remember that sort of was coined during the last major recession of 1992 in the US. Now that we're heading into sort of economic turmoil, probably in 2023, more than in 2022, what will that have as an impact on the political landscape? Because so far, even a new elected leader like Mr. Poiliev is not making that much of a difference just beyond the margin of error of the survey. Mm. Well, as a follow-up, Christian, did anything stand out in particular from the responses to his leadership? Did anything jump off the page when you looked at the numbers? Well, too divisive, I would say, is basically what the numbers are telling us on our side when it comes to Mr. Poiliev. Now, the fact that he's actually doing fairly well in Manitoba, Saskatchewan, uh, doing a little bit uh, less than expected in Alberta, but that's because of the actual conservative brand in that province and some of the issues tied to provincial politics there. Um, but really uh, doing rather uh, uh, poorly in the province of Quebec. So the only prospects of new seats right now, if you look at the numbers as they are today, is in Ontario and probably would mean that uh, Mr. Poiliev would need not to sweep Ontario, but mm. certainly have a majority of that, the seats in that province. And if he cannot break through the 905 barrier, just like we saw in Mississauga Lakeshore, uh, I mean, we're far from uh, uh, saying that Mr. Poiliev has, you know, any sort of win in his sales right now. Okay, Shachi, anything to add to that? I mean, should anybody be concerned by these numbers? <laughs> Look, so first of all, as much as we have known the Conservative Party in, in the last decade for, for dumping their leaders in quick succession, I think Mr. Poliev is going to be given a little bit more runway, if only because it's very much his party, his caucus. He won in such a commanding way. He's going to be given the time to try to grow. However, there are some red flags that I would add and, and include additionally to what Christiane has, has pointed out. He's got a major issue uh, on gender. Women don't like Mr. Poiliev. If you look at his numbers and who has a favorable view towards him and who has a very unfavorable view towards him, uh, it is very much a gender divide. Men 35 to, uh, 34 to 45, 55 plus, really like the guy. Uh, young women, uh, really women of all ages, do not. So that is a problem for Mr. Poliev. Additionally, uh, you find that at this stage, that divisive factor that Christian mentioned. So on that front, we have data that can take us back through where Stephen Harper was five months in, where Andrew Shear was five months in, where Aaron O'Toole was five months in. And something that that all of those leaders had going for them was, well, it's actually two things. First of all, Mr. Harper actually had favorable ratings five months in to his leadership. Uh, Mr. O'Toole and Mr. Shear benefited from an unknown factor, right? So there was always more room for growth. There was runway for people to change their minds. There is not a lot of equivocacy when it comes to Mr. Poiliev. People either don't like him or they do. Uh, and he's got to work on the don't like factor right now, particularly among women, if he wants to break through in the 905, if he wants to win seats in Metro Vancouver ever again. And, you know, uh, speaking of Quebec, the climate file continues to be a particularly challenging challenging one for the Conservatives that has ever been thus and continues to be. I'll just add one thing really briefly. If there is room for Mr. Poliev to grow, for the Conservatives to break through, it will be by continuing to run the plays from the Stephen Harper, Jason Kenney playbook, uh, reaching out to new Canadian audiences and new Canadian voters who in the last decade have traditionally been with the federal Liberals. Uh, that is a pendulum that always swings. We'll see if it swings back. Okay, Christian, last word to you. Let's go to everybody's favorite topic to end the year, election predictions. Uh, will 2023 be an election year? And if so, who do you see coming out on top? Well, 
right now, I, I don't think the conservatives are in such a rush, and I think the liberals will want to ride this sort of potential recession out uh, to some extent, because again, a, a, a poor economic climate usually hurts the incumbent. So I would say uh, that election would need to come as late as possible uh, for the incumbent. So will 2023 be an election year? Probably not. And at this point in, in the game, I would say we're basically heading into this sort of uh, elbow to elbow and, and uh, can't see really a favorite at this moment. Okay. I want to thank you both, Shachi Curl and Christian Bork.